How's it going folks? Taylor yeah. Wachowski here. Today we're talking about leashes. You may or may not have noticed there's a lot of different types of leashes out there. Which leash does what? Which one is better than the other? Are there differences between them? Which one is right for me? Is there a certain training leash that I can use? All that will be covered in today's video. First off, let's start with the different types of leashes there are. We have the leather leash, the nylon leash, the extendable leash, the stretchy leash, the thunder training leash, the slip leash, the ultrasonic leash attachment, the chain leash, the working leash, leash taps, the two dog leash attachment, and the long line. In this case, the 10 foot leash. Let's start with the leather leash. This leash is pretty simple. This is just like your average, everyday, basic leash. The nice clip at the end, six feet in length from the handle to your clip, and it's very durable. I personally use a leather leash with my dog because I know he's going to not chew on it. It's very strong and durable, and it'll last a good long while. And if you have a new dog or a new puppy that you just got, this probably isn't the best choice. When you start off with a new puppy, don't you don't have to get all the fancy stuff. You know, regular nylon leash will work. First off, you have to teach your new dog or your pup leash manners. First off, are they used to being led on a leash? If not, then you have to train them how to work on a leash. Um, do they pull on the leash? Do they chew on the leash? Are they comfortable dragging a leash? You want to make sure your dog is really comfortable with that before you go out and get all this fancy equipment. That way, it's not a waste to you or your animal. Just keep in mind, when you're buying anything new for your dog, whether it be a leash, a collar, a harness, little booties for their feet, you don't always have to go with the most expensive thing or the cheapest thing. Do your research, look it up, make sure it's good quality, check it out for yourself, and don't buy into the hype that everyone else is getting it, so you should too. Moving on to the extendable leash. Pull this little handle right here, and it unlocks it, and the leash can go in and out as it pleases. Then do this little handle, and then the leash locks. Pull it back in, you retract it, or the dog can pull, and do that, and it's locked. You can also hit this little, you'll see this little tab here, pull this handle all the way out. There you go, you don't have to hold that, the dog can go in and out if you want to. Undo that, and then it's locked again. It's a fancy flashlight, it's a spot for you to keep your baggies in. Personally, I don't like these types of leashes, and I often do not like when other people are using them. Mostly because they don't know how to use it properly. They'll get this unlocked and their dog gets to go as far as they want and come back. Their dog can get tied on things, stuck on things. They can hurt themselves. They can get into trouble. If I am 20 feet away with my dog on a six foot leash and I'm respecting everyone's space and keeping them close to me and this dog comes way over here while this individual is having a conversation at the pet store because that's why we go there and talk to people and not really take care animals? I don't know. Whatever that person is doing, they're doing something else. Their dog just pulls and makes their way over to me. I keep my dog to myself because he doesn't like a rude greeting. A lot of the dogs don't get the signals that Adonis will show them because they're kind of a stupid dog. And there's nothing bad towards the individual dog, it just means that humans have made these dogs stupid over time. Uh, they correct them when they try to talk to another dog. Um, Adonis may snap at another dog because they get too close to his face. He doesn't do it to be aggressive, he's not doing it to be dominant or mean, he's talking to that other dog. Now obviously I'm not gonna let him go out of his way to go snap at another dog or I don't want to cause any kind of conflict. Majority of the time making sure that he's comfortable, he's not in a space that is gonna be too tight for him, he's not in a place that's gonna make him nervous. Um, really it's never the dog's fault, it is the person's fault, it is a human fault the dog's fault. You're always going to hear me say that. Never blame the dog, blame the people. In that situation, it would be the individual who was not paying attention to their dog. Um, it could be my fault for not communicating to them, even if you do communicate, which I often do. Please give us some space and they may look at you and look away. They may bring their animal back in, not to say that I would ever let my dog attack another dog. He's not vicious, he's not aggressive, he's being a dog. He's letting that dog know, hey, get out of my space, you're not listening. Move. That's what dogs do. They talk to each other using teeth and body language, and a lot of dogs nowadays, people are always correcting them when they do. People don't let dogs be dogs. They don't let them speak to each other and learn. So moving on from that rant to the stretchy leash. Now I believe this is uh, something used for jogging. Um, a lot of, there's a little handle right here. There's a clip right here. I guess you could clip to your belt or you could hold it like this. Uh, this end goes on your dog. It has two clips right here. 
nice little stretchy bit in between so you can clip it to yourself to put this on your dog. Your dog can go running with you. You don't have to worry about keeping your leash tied up. So if you're in an open area and you have this and you want your dog to go running with you and you don't want to get all tangled up, then I believe this will be handy. And we have the working leash or training leash, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of people will call this a working leash because they use it on working dogs. Anyway, this is very nice. Again, it's leather. Um, very nice leash. It has, again, two clips. It has multiple rings on it, little D-rings on it. There's another one right here. So if you have a dog with a collar and a head halter, you can probably clip them both together like this. So you have one leash instead of two to control it. Generally, I just use one head halter that has a backup on the leash so you don't have to worry about multiple leashes going everywhere. Um, just my preference. You might possibly end up with a dog fight. Some people may use this and put this part around the back end of one of the dogs and clip it there and they're able to lift up on the dog or pull it. Um, be very careful. Don't try that at home if you have a dog fight. Don't go behind them. Don't get your arms around them. Don't grab them by the face, okay? The best option is to get a piece of furniture or something that you can shove in between the dogs, okay? Get a table, a chair, move it in between the dogs where the teeth are. Anyway. So that's the working leash. Nice and fancy, lots of clips on it. Not really meant for everyday average walking, but if you're doing a lot of uh, work with your dog, you want to tie him to a tree and kind of work on um, being calm and staying and such like that, or if you want to just tie him to a tie point or something, that might help. If you want to work with the head halter and the leash, you don't want two leashes flying around, and that might help you. It's a pretty handy tool for training your dog. You have a leash tab, which is essentially as long as this, it could be anywhere from four to six inches long or even smaller, a two inch leash tab. Basically it's just this handle, a little handle, and there's a clip at the end of it. So you put it on the, uh, the collar of the dog and that way you can keep the dog right close to you or you can let them kind of hang. So you need to go grab them really quickly, you can do that. A lot of people do use them for correction, although when they do it, it's a bit too late. By the time it takes you to walk over to that dog, grab that leash and pull up and correct on that dog, it's been far too long and the dog doesn't realize what they've done wrong. So I like them because they can hang there. If you need to go grab your dog, um, if they're really sniffing, getting into something you don't want them to and the, you, know, you don't have to go reaching for their, all the way for their collar, the leash tab is right there. You could just grab it, pull it long, and then release it, let them go again. If you don't want to worry about carrying a big old leash and you want your dog to stay close to you, go going through a crowd or something, then you have maybe a six inch leash tab that you can hold on to and keep your dog close to you. But make sure that you give that dog some release at some point. You don't want to keep that dog constantly by your side. Let them be a free animal. Let them get that space away from you. Let them go sniff. Don't always control them. Don't let them not sniff ever. Okay, they're a dog. They like to sniff. Give them some freedom. But this is very handy um, in case you need to keep that dog really close to you for a period of time. Then we have the multi-dog leash connection, whatever this is. Uh, this is where you could have two dogs uh, on one leash. Personally, I don't really like these because you don't have as much control over one dog or the other. Unless the dogs do well together, it might be very helpful. But if they get tangled up, uh, they might freak out. You have to constantly untangle them. You want to be able to teach each dog proper leash handling skills, how to walk properly on a leash, and this might kind of inhibit that training. You just have two dogs that do well together. You only want one leash, this can help with that too. Then we have the long line. This one is a 10 foot long line, uh, just a 10 foot leash, basically your regular clip right here. Used for training uh, when you're working your dog to become off leash reliable. Um, very, very handy. I really like these a lot when you're working with your dog. Basically, you can work with your dog 50 feet away and you still have the leash to reel them back in if you need to. So this is very good for the recall, the come cue to get your dog to come back to you. This is not your average everyday leash that you want to be taking your dog out if there's lots of people around because obviously you're going to have a whole bunch of leash you have to pull in and keep in your hand. It's uncomfortable and unnecessary. It would be more comfortable to use a regular six foot leash. Um, this is generally used for training. Then we have this other training leash called the Thunder Leash. This is not a sponsor by any means, just a, a special training leash that you use. It has this special little clip right here. Basically you use this leash to make a no pull harness out of your leash. The space in between these two parts is going to go in between this guy right here. Slide that in there. There you go. And it locks. If you're not used to that, you can go ahead and check out my harness video where I show you how to make a no-pull harness out of a regular leash. It's essentially the same thing. Then we have the slip leash. As mentioned before in my other video of how to make a harness out of a slip leash, a regular leash, this does exactly what it sounds like. It slips up and down. Um, it's easy to go on the dog, it loosens when the dog is not pulling, and it tightens when the dog does pull. It helps to keep the dog 
I'm slipping out of it. This isn't really generally used on an average dog. We use these a lot at the shelter. Most of the dogs there don't have a lot of collars. These come in a lot of different sizes. It's like a good medium size, thin size for smaller dogs. And when you're working with any type of tool like this or any leash, think of this as being a band around your her arm, so think of it as like a thick band of a watch, it's really comfortable. If this were a thread and this were pulling really tight on my skin, it's going to be really uncomfortable. Um, same thing with the dog, especially when it's restricting their airway. If you had a big dog, maybe something like this would work. It's a very fancy type of slip leash, it makes it a little bit easier to get this over a very large dog's head. You put your little stopper right there. So again, not to be used for your average everyday dog, uh, maybe if you have a loose dog, it's easy to slip it on from a distance. If you have a very nervous dog, you can do that as well. Um, you can tighten it up so they can't slip out. Um, it's very handy in a shelter environment or if you're dealing with a lot of loose dogs when you're trying to get your neighbor's dog back for them or something like that and they don't have a collar on, then this is a good route to go. Then you have the ultrasonic leash attachment. Um, I've never heard about this until recently when I was doing research for this video about the different types of leashes out there, their proper names. Basically, it's just a little clip that goes on your, your leash, your regular leash or your collar of your dog. And when the dog pulls too hard, it sends a signal to this little uh, technical device and it emits an ultrasonic sound. So a very high-pitched sound to the dog right in their ears. It keeps doing that until the dog stops pulling. So it's just an easy way to get your dog to stop pulling. I, I think there's a lot of other much better ways to work with your dog to train your dog not to pull. I don't like any kind of technology and electrical devices to be anywhere around my animal, especially not their face or their throat area. Especially not around an animal who has no choice in that. I have a choice. I have the option to listen to headphones or not. I have the choice to talk on a phone or not. And I know that it can possibly cause cancer in the future, you know, but I choose to do it anyway. Dogs don't know. They don't care. They don't have an option. We put these things on there and expect them just to learn. Correction. Then we have chain leashes, which can be okay. I prefer to just use a, a traditional leash, a, a nylon leash or a leather leash, because the chain is really uncomfortable, kind of hard to grip. Really, you can't get a good um, leash grip on it if you need to. Uh, you can't move down the leash and tighten it up a little bit so you don't have all this, you know, leash going all over the place. Grip it with a little leash lock around your thumb. Nice and simple, you tighten it up there with a the chain leash. It's a little bit harder to do. It's really hard on your hands. It slips a lot, although it does deter dogs from chewing on this leash. You can do that in much better ways. You can train your dog not to chew on the leash without having to use chain, especially on young puppies. People will do that. I don't like metal anywhere around the dog's face either, or in their mouth, especially in a puppy. They can hurt their teeth. They can get stuck on teeth. They can break some baby teeth. It's just not necessary. I think there's better ways you can do it to teach your dog not to bite or chew on the leash. They're very strong, they're very durable, but they can still break just like any other leash if your dog is really pulling it, it and if you drop that leash it may go back and snap your dog and might move around your dog's face and kind of smack it so instead of having something like this hitting your face you have metal hitting your face so that's probably really uncomfortable for the dog. If this chain gets stuck on something when those little links can get caught on something if the leash is dragging on the floor that's not good it can get the dog stuck or get the dog in trouble your research, uh, be careful about what you buy just because it looks cool or it looks good or it's really cheap or oh this is really you know really highly respected in the animal world doesn't mean it's the best thing for the dog. Sometimes the most simple things work the best. Then we have the nylon leash. This is a very small one for a very small dog, very simple, um, nice plasticky material, a little bit slippery. Um, it has a, a simple clip right here. I prefer one of these type of clips because it really closes this one um, sometimes has proven to get caught in there. It causes you know, issues um, or it can come off very easily. This one is a larger version of that. This is a four foot version, again, with the same type of clip. Both very slippery, but both very handy. It's still a leash, it works just fine. When working with leashes, um, something handy to know is how to hold the leash. Twist your hand around like this, and you have lots of grip on that leash, right? Because you don't have all that, that slack or that extra leash material you don't have to worry about. This can be a very dangerous way to hold the leash as well as many other ways that you may hold it like this. That reason being, your dog is very powerful and very strong. Imagine your dog as the engine of a very fast car and this is a rope and it's tied to you and say that dog or car finds a squirrel and they chase after it, you're stuck. So holding the leash in a proper way is very important because it helps you get more leverage over the dog. I like to put it in simple leash lock, I put it over my thumb, loop it up what's called accordion style, 
Okay, grab that in your hand. You grip all of this. Grip this. Or another simple way to do it is just go over and grab this. Very simple. It can slide, you can lock it if you want to. You can do a simple finger lock. That way you can close to your body and you get that much more leverage over the dog versus holding it just simply like this. That way you don't have to worry about your hand being pulled forward. You lose that leverage, you may fall over, you may get trigger finger because you're grabbing that leash so hard. Um, you might cause some arthritis or other painful injuries. Leash handling skills are very important with any leash. Part of the reason why I don't like the retractable leash is because a lot of people may use it as babysitter. Uh, even the people who do know how to use them doesn't teach you good handling skills in my opinion. And again, I'm old fashioned. I like simple leashes. I like to be able to move up and down the leash and bring in that slack and it just makes you a little bit quicker and you have that much more experience when working with your dog. So that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below um, and let me know in the comments what you would like to see next if you have any questions about any of these individual items. And until next time, stay positive.